From the basement of La Penta, it's WICR. Hello, Iona College. Welcome back to the Sports Ball. Jersey Joe and Big Shot Rob, we're rolling along on our show. Got a couple more interesting things to go over. We did our college football, did our NFL. Like I said, again, those will be posted later. You can follow us on Twitter at Sports Vault Iona. So if you miss any of the good stuff, no worries. Those will be posted. You can watch them later. But we're here now, so let's get into it now. I talked about a little bit in the first show how kind of over the summer soccer became a really big thing in my arsenal of sports. And, man, it's just been – it's it's created something just unbelievable because when I wake up on a Saturday from 7 o'clock to 1 o'clock in the morning – I just uh, there's there's always a game to watch, so it's just it's been so much fun. But this week I'm really excited to get my first taste of the UEFA Champions League. Now, if for people who don't know what that is, it's kind of the equivalent of the NCAA tournament here in America. But all the best teams in Europe they all battle it out kind of for that one spot, and the brackets are selected. And Wednesday, we have some phenomenal games. If you were interested in all, Wednesday would probably be the best time for you to tune in and catch some of these games. For the people who are interested, uh, as a new soccer fan, I still have a lot to learn, but, man, I'm loving every minute of it so far, and I'm really excited for these games. Starting off Wednesday, you have my team AS Roma taking on CSKA Moscow. I've watched Roma a lot this summer, caught their first win of the season the other day, um, and they looked very good. I think Francesco Totti, he's still playing very well at his age. I liked what I saw at Awani Turbe. I think that Roma looked really good, and I think they're going to get a win here on Wednesday. Now, the next game for Wednesday, I haven't really seen much of these two teams, so I don't know en- enough about them yet, but you have Ajax against Paris SG. I both I know both teams are very good uh, clubs, so I'm going to be really interested in that one. But the next one, I can't. I need. I need to see this game. I really do. You have Chelsea and FC Schalke 04, a German team. Chelsea is the best team in the English Premier League so far. Chelsea's just been unbelievable. They've played three weeks so far in the English Premier League. Chelsea has by far looked like the best out of all of them. Each week, you've just seen the improvement in Chelsea. I think they're going to get a win here, and I'm very excited to see how they look in this tournament. After that, you have Barcelona, and then you have another team. I, I, I have not watched this team at all yet. It's Apol and Nicosia. I'm not sure if I'm spelling that right, but I have watched Barcelona a lot. Barcelona, uh, you have Messi, who, of course, has been unbelievable so far. They've uh, Barcelona's won their first two games. Everything's looked good there. Neymar played a little bit. He's getting healthier. For people who don't remember, I'm sure you've all remembered the World Cup this summer. Neymar was the big star from Brazil who got hurt towards the end when things started to go down. But before that, he was playing unbelievably. He is part of Barcelona's team. And Messi, Neymar, you have Gerard Piquet. Barcelona is one of the best teams in the world. They will get a win here, and it's going to be exciting. And then the final game, my favorite team in the English Premier League, Manchester City, taking on Bayern Munich. This is probably the best game out of all of these. But arguably, these are Chelsea and Manchester City are probably the best two teams in the English Premier League. Bayern Munich is arguably the best team in the German Bundesliga, which is Germany's league. And look, it's just going to be an exciting game. These are arguably two of the best teams in the world here. Now, from what I've heard and read, Manchester City has not done well against the other top teams in Europe in the last couple of years, especially in this tournament. So hopefully their their luck can be turned around. Unfortunately, they're not coming into this tournament on good ground. Uh, Manchester City losing last, uh, the last week in the English Premier League. But I'm really going to be excited for this game for Manchester City and for Bayern Munich, but overall, it's just it's a great slate of games, especially for a person like me who's never experienced the UEFA Champions League before. It's It couldn't be more exciting, and it's just going to be great, and I'm going to be tuning into these games. But Rob, I'm going to turn it over to you now. Now, Rob, you're not as big a soccer fan. For me, per- personally, before the summer, I never really had as big an interest, but uh, it's kind of become a huge thing for me. I'm all in on soccer, but I want to ask you, What do you think about the growth of soccer in this country? Because I think when you look at the ratings, you look, you just look around, you see more soccer apparel in places like that. It's definitely grown in the United States and will continue growing. Well, that's what I want to ask you. 
I think it's going to continue to grow, Joe. You know, ever since the World Cup, that's where a lot of people who never watched soccer before finally started watching it, ruined for their countries. And I see it in my own neighborhood with my neighbors. They all support soccer. My neighbor's uh, team is Argentina, and they love soccer. And um, soccer is just a thing that's going to keep growing because, you know what, it's an interesting sport, especially towards the end of games. I love when you're waiting for the 90th minute and the team's down 2-1 and they'll score the goal late. And even now, Joe, one thing I'm starting to see, even at our school right now, is trends of kids wearing more soccer jerseys. I haven't seen that the first two years here, and I'm seeing a lot of more soccer jerseys. Absolutely. I think that's a good point there. I think part of the real appeal of soccer, especially for young people in this country where soccer is probably doing the best, is the, the time investment. Two hours and you're done. I mean, I could watch two English Premier League games from 7 o'clock to about 10 o'clock in the morning. I've watched two games already. You have the rest of your day. I mean, I don't because I have to watch every game uh, because I want to and because it's my job. But, I mean, it's two-hour commitment, and you're done. And I think that's really appealing. And I think it's it's part of my argument with baseball right now is baseball just drags on forever. It's It's too long for young people. And young people, if you give a young person a chance – to spend two hours of their time watching a game or if you give them a game that could go four or five hours for 16 innings they're going to take the two-hour investment it's all action some there's no commercials you get a break in between two-hour investment i think that's very appealing to soccer rob what about for you i mean for us we watch everything under the sun but i, I think that's one of my favorite parts about it is just that time investment our time is very valuable we use a lot of that time for things in two hours. It's a great thing. Yeah, it definitely is because you know what, Joe? Sometimes when you're watching a baseball game, you're saying that the game's going 15 innings. It's going for about four to five hours long. As you said with soccer, you're watching two games. You get two hours of time, in, and you have the rest of the day to you. With That's a good thing with soccer is people like that fast-paced game. It's going on. They don't like baseball, how it just continues slowly going on. This guy takes five minutes to throw a pitch. This guy takes another five minutes to go switch into the bullpen. It's like that's why soccer is coming out to be such a great sport because it's more of a faster interaction for people. Games are a lot quicker, and that's what keeps the interest level in these people. No question about it. Now, we are breaking new ground on the sports hall. For this segment, first we talking, we're talking we talking soccer, and now we're talking tennis. I mean, we're, we're bringing it all under the sun now. So, Rob, you spent – a large part of the end of back end of your summer working at the U.S. Open. So I want you to give our audience, you've really, I mean, when I talk with you, you love this stuff. I mean, you are all in on it. I want you to tell us, I mean, what it was your experience there and just what do you like most about what you saw? This is my sixth, this was my sixth U.S. Open, Joe. And every year since I first started, I never watched tennis. My uncle would take me to night matches and I started to learn the sport a lot. And every year it just gets better and better to me. It's more exciting. And what I love so much about the U.S. Open is no matter what, no matter what, if a person's down two sets, the fans always stay there to support them. A couple nights ago, Roger Federer lost his first two sets to Gael Monfils, battles back and wins the next three sets to set up the semifinals. And that's what just keeps my interest level. I love how these guys never give up. And it's just these superstars of our age, Novak Djokovic, Roger Federer, Nadal, Andy Murray, Serena Williams, Caroline Wozniacki, Maria Sharapova. I love watching all these tennis players because I just love the energy in them. Novak Djokovic a couple nights ago down in a set scores a point. And just the energy of how he fired up the crowd, just going crazy with his hands and motions. And this is why the U.S. Open is so interesting to me. Because I have to say, it is probably the most greatest sporting event in the world. You have to see how packed it gets, Joe, for those three weeks. How many people come from different countries, old people, young kids, and they just love the sport. And I love talking to them when they come back at the end of the night. And they're like, yeah, I got what I paid for. And it's just such a great experience. I, lo I love the passion there. I mean, just... I mean, you could tell when somebody has a passion about what they're talking about. And I think that's really good. My question for you is, I mean, you, you really know your stuff here. What is this sport geared more towards a specific audience? I think when you look at tennis sometimes, maybe you think it's like a country club type thing or it's more of a upper um, socioeconomic type of sport. But is it a kind of thing where you think anybody from any demographic could just sit down and watch it and enjoy it? Or you think it's more of an acquired taste? I think I think it's something a lot of people could watch. And my reason for it, Joe, is 
there's so much diversity with tennis because all these different players are from different countries. You're appealing to kids from Sweden, kids from France, people from Britain, and it just puts them all together. And you're appealing to all ages because as a kid, you watch Roger Federer. Oh, I want to be just like Roger Federer, mom and dad. I want to be out there on the tennis courts. And that is what gets kids started from the bottom. I have one guy who's a co- I work baggage at the US Open and there's one guy who comes every year for the past 6 years and I love this guy's passion because he's there every single day at the Open this older gentleman he just tells me how much of a great time he has there so you know what the US Open it hits everybody's age tennis hits all ages in my opinion that's great i mean look that that's probably my biggest question i mean you try to sit i think it's it's tough because I, and i've learned it more with soccer i mean soccer it used to be where i would just sit down and I would just kind of dismiss it, but I think once I sat down and I actually started just to, just to experience what and think about what I was watching, I was like, this is pretty special. So I got to give tennis a chance next time the U.S. Open comes around. Rob is our man on that stuff, so he's going to be able to tell us everything, give us that inside information that we need. So it's going to be exciting, but that's definitely going to become uh, more important to us there. But overall, that's going to do it and wrap it up for this show. Really fun. Enjoyed doing the show. So we did our NFL stuff in the beginning, moved on to college football. After that, we did our, our soccer stuff, had some U.S. Open stuff. So we're adding a lot more to the sports vault there. If you miss any of it and you're catching us now, it will be posted later. Follow us on Twitter at Sports Vault Iona. And it was a great show. Tonight, you've got the Chargers and then the Cardinals. You've got the Lions and the Giants. Doubleheader for Monday Night Football. And most of all, Rob, Clayton Kershaw takes the mound. Now, I don't know how I'm going to do this. It's going to be a late night, probably going to end around 1, 2 o'clock. But, I mean, i got to try to catch the the Giants and the Lions, the Chargers and the Cardinals, while watching Clayton Kershaw start. I don't know, Rob. If it was you, which one do you go to? I would go with Clayton Kershaw tonight. But there's one more thing you have to catch tonight, Joe, the men's championship today oh, at 5 o'clock. Fill us in. Give us a little taste. What are we going to see? Well, this is the first championship, Joe, for men's singles where Roger Federer, Nadal, Murray, and Djokovic haven't been to the men's final since 05. First Grand Slam title. It's a bunch of new names. And you know what? I'm actually excited about it because we're going to see somebody finally take charge and we're going to see a difference in tennis as the rising stars coming up. Prediction? What um, do you think? I'm going to go with, today I'm going with Nishikori. He's just been really hot. Beat Wawrinka in five sets a couple days ago. Comes back, beats Djokovic in four sets. And you know what? He has so much momentum going in that I think he's going to come out and win five sets today. Awesome. Predictions here. I mean, man, it, it's going to be a great night for sports. Clayton Kershaw, you got tennis, Monday Night Football. Couldn't get any better. It's the stuff we live for on the sports vault. But that's going to do it for our show. Thank you for tuning in and being a part of it. Uh, Thank you again. This is Jersey Joe and Big Shot Rob signing off.